How many of you were taught that derivative is the tangent line of a curve and integral is the area under the curve? These explanations might work in the short term, but they make it difficult to understand fundamental theorem of calculus. How on earth is tangent line related to the area anyway? To make sense of it, you need to truly understand what derivative is, what integral is. To understand them, you need to understand the mission of calculus, finding relationship. If there is a relationship between two things, that means one will change with the other. So relationship between the two, and the relationship between the two changes, they are the two sides of the same coin. Knowing one side, you can find the other. Differentiation and integration are the two forces that can get us from one side to the other. Derivative means how fast one thing changes with the other. If it's constant, we know y is just the speed times x, similar to how we get the distance for a constantly moving car. But what we get is more than a single value y. We have its relationship in terms of x, telling us how to compute y for any x. Things get complicated because change is not constant. It means y responds to different x differently. For example, when x is small, changing x will induce a small change in y. But when x is large, same amount of change will induce a larger change in y. So the velocity is also changing with x. But as long as it's not randomly changing, we can still get the relationship. It just won't be this simple. To get it, you can't multiply one velocity by the overall x. Instead, you need to do that little by little. You chop the overall change in x into n increments. a is the starting point. Then you evaluate the velocity for each interval. Then you use the incremental velocity times the interval to get each increment. Add them up. This is how much y changes. Add it to the starting y, you can get what final y is. This aggregation approach is pretty straightforward, nothing unusual. Plug in specific number, you will get the answer. But the magic happens when you carry out the calculation symbolically. Say, the velocity is linear. When you use it to find out the incremental velocities, keep them abstract. Then you can use algebra to aggregate and simplify terms. In the end, you can use the limit process to get the precise answer. But what's remarkable is you have obtained a general relationship between the two, not just one specific value. So aggregating the incremental changes Using the velocity formula, we can find out the general relationship. On the other hand, if we know the general relationship, you can use differentiation to back out the velocity. So differentiation and integration are the two forces getting from one side to the other. Now let's take a look at the theorem. Part 1 is reinforcing that it's a full circle. If you know the relationship of the change, you use integration to patch back the relationship. Then if you differentiate this patch relationship, you will get back the velocity. But why is it important to be on the full circle? That's because differentiation is easier, integration is difficult. If you have a complex relationship, for example, an exponential term, it's relatively easy to differentiate to get the velocity. But if you start with this velocity, trying to patch up the relationship, the aggregation is not that easy. But because you know they should fall on a full circle, hence, if this is what you started with, it must be where you will end, with only a constant difference because of the initial starting point. So in my opinion, fundamental theorem of calculus provides a handy way of doing integration without actually doing it. Part 2 of the theorem is saying that to find out when x changes from a to b, how much y changes, there are two ways to do so. 
One way is to aggregate the derivative term little by little from A to B. This is the tedious way. Another way is if we can find out the relationship between x and y. Then when x is a, y is f a. When x is b, y is f b. So how much y changes? Subtract the two. So easy. But I should warn you, this only works if you do have an explicit formula for the relationship. If you're integrating a normal density function, in theory, you can use the nth formula to compute. But we haven't found out the explicit formula yet, so you can only use numerical integration. Don't you think this interplay of differentiation and integration is way more exciting than the geometrical rhetoric? <laughs>